Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to talk about one of the experiments that's trying to find dark matter. So dark matter is something that is holding galaxies together, at least we think so, that's one of the explanations. And one of the easiest ways of trying to imagine what dark matter is, or what it might be, is by taking a look at uh, the simulation from Universe Sandbox where you can visually see how these unusual chunks, the red circles, this is dark matter, are holding um, the galaxy together. Now, this is kind of relevant to what we're talking about today, because in this model that the Universe Sandbox uses, this is sort of um, one of the theories explaining or trying to explain what dark matter might be. These are called WIMPs. Weakly interacting massive particles. Now, um, they're slightly bigger than protons in terms of size, we think. They're also slightly more massive, or a lot more massive, but they don't interact with any matter. And this is why we're calling them uh, weakly interacting, because they don't want to interact with anything, which is why we can't seem to detect them. But they do have a lot of mass, and this is how they're able to hold the galaxies together. Although for the most part, it's still in very sort of hypothetical stages because once again, we haven't really seen them, we haven't found them, we've been looking and looking and found nothing. And this is of course why there are so many other alternative theories out there, including uh, quantized inertia, uh, that try to explain the universe in alternative means. But nevertheless though, the experiments that have been designed to try to find these things are absolutely fascinating. And today we're going to briefly talk about one of such experiments, because the scientists behind this experiment that's conducted in Italy have discovered something maybe just as incredible and as fascinating as these things right here. And this joint experiment known as the Xenon experiment conducted in Italy is by a team of over 160 scientists from US, Europe, Middle East, um, basically everywhere, working together trying to essentially find those wimps. Now, the way that they're doing it is by using this tremendously large um, experimentation room that's been placed approximately a kilometer and a half or a mile down in the ground to prevent things like cosmic rays uh, from interfering with this experiment. So they've created this really isolated room, and inside this room they placed a very large container with something like 3 tons of xenon-124. Now what exactly is that? Well, xenon is of course a noble gas that actually has quite a lot of various isotopes that exist in nature. Some of them are stable and never decay, never change. Some decay really fast and thus produce visible radiation. But for this experiment, they needed to use something that doesn't decay really fast. As a matter of fact, something that almost doesn't decay at all, but can potentially change. And they chose this right here, Xenon-124. Um, this element unofficially had a very long but somewhat unknown half-life. In other words, we didn't really know how long it takes for it to decay, but we knew that it's super, super, super long. And so we knew that uh, Xenon-124 changes into Tellurium-124, but we've never observed it, so we didn't really know how long it takes. Until now. So during this particular experiment, when they placed this Xenon underground and they had everything ready, they even had these really powerful electric sensors ready to detect any potential interaction with WIMPs with dark matter. And, well, instead of detecting WIMPs, they actually detected the decay of xenon atoms that they really didn't expect to detect at all. In other words, they've detected something they thought could not possibly happen um, in human timescales. Here's a simplified version of what uh, the detector looks like. This is where the sensors are, this is xenon itself. And here, any kind of a wimp that could potentially pass through the xenon container would um, hopefully produce electrons that could then be detected up here. However, unfortunately for them, but fortunately for everyone else, instead of dark matter, they detected most unexpected event, um, well, you could almost say in human history, but at least in scientific history, the decay of one of the most stable isotopes in existence. As a matter of fact, the only other element that we know that has an isotope that's even more stable, in other words, an isotope that takes even longer to decay is um, an element known as Tellurium-128. Now this here changes into Tellurium-124, so an isotope known as Tellurium-128 has an even longer lifespan. 
But how long is long? Well, so for Xenon 124, we have now, because of this event, we're able to calculate the half-life of this isotope to be 1.8 sextillion years. That's 1.8 followed by 20 zeros years. And that's for half of those um, atoms to turn into tellurium-124. So in other words, for a single atom to change... So in other words, if you were to think about it in terms that are a little bit more clear, this element here is one of the least radioactive isotopes out there. It produces almost no radiation, and it's the first time ever we were able to detect anything coming out of Xenon-124, and chances of it happening again are pretty low unless we wait a really, really long time. But why are we even using this particular element? Well, think about it. So we're trying to detect something that's very difficult to detect. And we're using this isotope that's very stable, but still, it's an isotope. It can change into something else. So if you were to give it a little bit of a nudge, it would change into Tellurium-124, produce some energy that we can hopefully detect using these sensors. However, in order for us not to get distracted by detecting wrong things, we have to place it really deep underground, we also have to isolate it from everything, and make sure that no radiation comes in here. Because any kind of an energy or even a, a slight tremble from a, a person walking nearby could potentially produce fake results. And so even though they haven't really detected any dark matter, they have now officially were able to calculate the half-life of this really strange isotope known as Xenon-124, while this is actually really important, also establishing the fact that we've now created one of the most accurate detection systems in the world. The fact that we were able to catch those few atoms and then use that to calculate the half-life of a very stable isotope is just mind-blowing. And this is really why the dark matter research is kind of important. Even though these things here might not be real, even though it might seem like we're wasting so much money looking for these potentially imaginary things, what we're using to detect them and what we're creating in the process is super important. We're creating some of the most sensitive, some of the most incredible tools that humans have ever created. And this is why, um, even though, well, maybe dark matter is not real, just the fact that we're able to create these and potentially use these for some other means uh, in the future, which is actually how a lot of things that we use today have been created. Like think about things like GPS or things like um, smartphone use. All of this was not intended for people to use. It was actually either military technology or research technology. So in the future, this particular technology will be definitely used for something else. And this is why it's kind of important. It propels us to discover new things while also creating these absolutely mind-blowing and super technologically advanced rooms that are out of science fiction, but are real. And this is why dark matter research is technically a good thing. Although I guess if one day we discover that dark matter can be explained in some other means, well, it will be heartbreaking for some people, but at the same time, all of this technology will definitely help us in the future. Oh, and before I finish, this is a little bit off topic, but one of the ways I've discovered this particular uh, event is by looking into what the American scientists are working on in terms of trying to find a new way of detecting dark matter. And they're using this really cool phenomenon that went viral on YouTube because even um, Veritasium made a video about it called Super Cooled Water. If you take uh, a bottle of water, and it's relatively perfect bottle of water, uh, with distilled water inside, and you cool it down to like, let's say minus 10 degrees Celsius, which is below the freezing point, and then give it like a tap or just introduce any kind of an imperfection, this is what happens. It freezes almost instantly. You've probably seen the videos um, about this. And what's really interesting is that the scientists working on this project decided to create what's known as a snowball chamber. And you can see uh, this is the same effect here, but the principle is a little bit different. You super cool water and you place it in a very airtight and basically everything tight uh, container protected from absolutely everything. And then you wait for something to cause the um, super cooling effect which you can visually observe happening right here. And this is because the scientists working on this project discovered that uh, neutrons passing through this water can actually trigger this. But interestingly, not other things, like for example, gamma rays. So um, they are thinking that maybe this is actually a much better way of detecting um, dark matter. 
and the scientists at the University of Albany in New York are currently working on trying to create something that's similar to this, but much larger and with a lot more capabilities of detecting this on bigger scales. So there's definitely a lot of really interesting projects going on right now. Um, a lot of cool new science being created, a lot of cool new devices, and I'm pretty sure that of all of those devices we've created to detect this unusual and possibly non-existent dark matter, at least a few of them will most likely become um, either super important for us in the future or potentially might even become something we use daily. Either be a detector of some kind or something else that we've discovered while looking for this elusive dark matter, it will definitely be in your life, maybe in 20, 30, maybe 40 years from now. Assuming, of course, you're still alive. But that's another story for another day. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about the science of dark matter, but most importantly about the interesting research that's going on in trying to find this. And in one of the future videos, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about some other fringe theories or some other ideas that are being currently investigated by scientists in trying to explain the universe and trying to explain why is it that galaxies move the way they move and if dark matter and dark matter energy are real. On that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.